Janine, we are live. Okay. Good morning and welcome. Today is Saturday, March 13th at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. Soon we'll be an hour off as we enter daylight savings time, which is exciting. And you are watching or participating in the Human Rights Commission listening series. This is our second session of a brand new program that we want input from the community. And we wanna hear from the community about what you see the Human Rights Commission can do to help you and help our community so that we live in a city that feels more inclusive, more diverse, and more equal for all. We usually begin our meetings by simply taking a few minutes to settle and arise. So if you'd like to join us, you can find some comfortable position, either sitting or standing. And it's up to you if you want to close your eyes or not. If your eyes are open, it might be nice to have them be unfocused. So you relax that, that sense of responsibility that you need to look at this or that, define or identify. And let's all just take a few moments to move the body around. Just get the sense that you're in a body. Like, so feel your body shift in space and feel how your weight moves front and back, side to side. And then settle into a position that feels dignified upright, alert, yet relaxed. See if you can release any expectations of how you should be or how things should be. Feel the way your body is contacting the chair, the ground. Just the body's natural weight and groundedness. Just feel the way that you're breathing. No need to regulate the breath. Just feel the way the breath operates within you. Breath flowing in, breath flowing out. And notice your feeling, perceiving, experiencing. No need to judge, no need to comment, nothing to reject, nothing to grasp. No need to stop or control or change anything. Just let life flow through you. Just here, just now, just this. And as we conclude, if you feel it would be helpful, take a few slow, deep breaths, nice and long, 
as though you could breathe through your whole body. Imagine you could breathe through every pore of your skin, every cell of your being. It's fine to use your imagination. It may also be helpful to exhale and let out uh, a loud or a soft or internal, uh, just letting go of the way we get enmeshed and entangled. We get stuck in what's happening. <sighs> hmm. And if your eyes are closed, you can open them and just welcome yourself just as you are. It may seem like, why, do, why is this important to do these kind of practices to be grounded, present, how does this help this important work in the world, in the community? If we're not grounded and present, if we're not able to be with our own experience in a curious and friendly way, to have our own dialogue, how can we expect to do that with others? How can we expect to do that in the world? So there is a value that ripples out to others, to the community, to the world. So we have here this morning um, two fellow commissioners. Um, I will introduce, I'll let them introduce themselves in a moment. It's Jalon Fowler and Kathy Reinstein. We're also um, here with Claudio, our translator for Spanish, and Ruben Cantor, the city staff who has been greatly supporting the HRC. Um, and we have been, we've opened these sessions up so that um, we're hoping that people in the community will register and come and speak and share their stories, share their concerns, give us some uh, input on what they'd like to see the Human Rights Commission do within the community. Because this is new and we're still getting the word out or maybe people feel a little nervous coming on to Zoom or whatever the reason, we haven't had people um, register. So what we'll do is probably have a shorter session and I'm going to ask the two commissioners that are present and also if uh, anybody else uh, joins us or wants to speak up, they're welcome. Um, so I'll start with Jalon, if you're comfortable. Um, please first start off with stating your name and your relationship with the city of Revere, just how long you've been here, just a general relationship. Thank you, Chair Mara. Um, my name is Jalon Fowler. I've lived in Revere for close to 16 years. Um, I've raised my three kids here and um, do you want me to keep going? Sorry, I don't know. If, um, it's up to it's up to you. Um, I'll, I'll ask all the questions. So if you want okay. to continue or stop, back to you. I'll I'll wait graciously then. <laughs> and Kathy. Good morning. Thank you, Chair Mara. It's nice to be here with you and Jalan. Great to see you. And thank you, Ruben and Claudio, as always. Um, I'm Kathy Reinstein. I have been in the city my entire life. Um, which now is 50 years, which is crazy. I turned 50 in January. Um, I was an elected official for a long time. I come from a family um, that has a lot of public service centered around the city of Revere. And uh, it's really an honor to have been asked to serve on this commission. And I'm happy to be with, here with all of you today. Thank you. Um, so the next question I'd like to ask is, um, when did you first become aware of race? So in your life, and this could be, you know, at some point in your early life in Revere or depending on where you grew up, but when did you first become aware of the idea, the issue of race, the implications of any kind of discrimination or inequality? Jalan, do you feel ready to go? Sure, thank you. Um, so for myself, 
um, being born African American in a predominantly white community. I grew up in Missouri, Massachusetts. I've always been aware of being different. Uh, my parents, my mom transplanted up here from the South. She was from uh, Louisiana, Southeast Louisiana. And my dad grew up relatively in, in the Merrimack Valley area. So he was very familiar, but we, we were always proud of who we were and our heritage. And um, so it was never a hidden thing just amongst ourselves we knew who we were and then of course at a very young age you notice that you're different and no connotation negative or positive either way but certainly from an early age I recognized that I was different uh different culture at home uh different experience um you know it's no secret that a lot of times people that are brown and black are are in different positions in life, sometimes treated differently. So that was always there. Um, yeah, so that was that's my story of, of when I first realized <laughs> I was different or of race. <laughs> thank you, Shalon. Kathy? Hi, thank you. Thank you, Shalon, for staring, telling your story too. Um, I guess probably going through school, you know, growing up in Revere, when I was younger, it was really in almost, it was very predominantly white. Um, and there were just really a few African-American families. And I had a few African-American friends in my classes. And then I think in the late, uh, early eighties, you had a flux of Asian, um, people of Asian descent come to the city from, you know, Cambodia and Vietnam. And so certainly in high school, there was a lot, but I, I guess my you know, the thing that really I had, there was one black teacher, I think in the city and he was at the Whalen school. His name was Mr. Miller and he was my fourth or fifth grade teacher. And um, he was the one who really kind of explained and really drew attention to the differences and, and, you know, more understanding. And he was the first person who ever talked to us about black history month. Thank you. Uh, Ruben, would you, do you feel like being part of this conversation? Good morning. <laughs> I was not prepared to be part of the conversation, but. Um, you can pass. I don't want you to feel forced, but you're welcome. It's, you know, I, uh, I actually grew up on the West Coast out in Oregon in a very, very white community. Um, and uh I don't think I entirely realized how white of a community it was until um, someone I was close to, um, her brother was an adopted um, African-American um, young, young person. And uh, he was um, really struggling himself with you know, his own background and how you know, he was, grew up in a white family in a white community, but he was black and had no connection to his black heritage. And, um, like just sort of listening to him and, and listening to my friend talk about that whole situation really woke me up to like that disparity and, and not really, you know, realizing just how white um, a community I had grown up in. And I think it uh, sort of sparked me to spend more time thinking about um, these kinds of issues and, and making sure that, um, that I was aware and, uh, and interested in, in being a part of making positive change. And so I think I've spent some portion of, of my, um, my life, my adult life, um, sort of working towards, uh, towards a lot of positive change where I could. So, uh, and I'm really excited that, um, uh, that Mayor Rigo uh, launched this commission as part of that. I was really excited to, um, to engage with and be a part of some of the, uh, the Black Lives Matter um, protests, the first ever in the city um, last year and um, working with those incredible, incredible young people to um, make that tremendously successful event um, uh, happen in whatever little ways I was able to support them. Um, and, and just the, the feeling of being a part of that, it just felt like it was such a transformative moment for the city. Um, and, uh, and so I think just now that we're doing this, um, I just think there's so much more um, we can do so much positive. So, and it's not just about even, uh, not only I should say about race, there's so much more um, that we have the, the potential to, uh, to, to work on, to talk about, to be a part of. Um, so that's, that's my story. Thank you. Thanks for asking. And I, I guess I'll just share 
briefly. Um, I grew up in Everett, even though I've been in Revere since 1989. And similar to Kathy, and when I was in school, there were just a handful of um, Black students. I was friends with, with many of them through sports and athletics. Um, but it was, it was clear that, that that was the minority, like that of a class of 400, there were maybe a half a dozen um, black or other kind of um, you know, minorities that were part of that class. I think um, the, the one other memory that really affected me is um, one of my grandparents was, was quite prejudiced. And I remember as a young child being like in a grocery store and if he saw a mixed couple, he'd almost be like, making jokes or pointing fingers. And I remember that awkward feeling of wanting to be close to my family, yet at the same time, like, so feeling like I had to go along on some level, but at the same time, feeling like this doesn't feel right. Um, but not being too young and not really knowing enough to know what to do with all of that. Um, so, and unfortunately it took me really until, um, the George Floyd murder for me to really wake up to um, my whiteness and, and what that means. Um, so I guess I have a couple more questions. The next question is um, how, you know, so as, after an early age, you know, then through your life, what incident, I just mentioned George, George Floyd, how have, how have you been tracking with, whether it's racism or really any of the isms, um, if, if, if feminism, sexism, ableism, I mean, any of those isms, any ways that there is not a sense of equality and equity and inclusiveness, how, how have you been impacted throughout the years? How have you may have been involved in different ways or, or maybe been afraid to get involved depending on your personality and your journey. Um, so I'll change the order. Uh, although Jalon, you look like you're ready to speak. Your energy looks ready. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust my intuition and call on you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was ready. I, I thought we were going in the same order. So you, you're coming with a deep question today, which I fully appreciate, but you know, I'm sitting here like, wow, how much time do we have? You know? <laughs> so uh, th these are really great questions. And I'm really honored to be able to share with everybody. Um, you know, this is my life's work. You know, it's not something I put on and this isn't directed to anybody as a costume or something that I've had to realize this, this walking around in in my body and bearing witness to how we live and what's around us is, is so organic to who I am, whether it's as a woman, as a black woman, as a black Muslim woman, you know, any of those intersecting kind of categories. It's, it's how I walk around and, you know, um, sometimes, you know, it's funny, I'll say that when I started wearing my scarf, I thought, oh, I'll just fade into the background and just go about my life. Then 9-11 happened. And it's like, I'm front and center. And a part of me is like, I never asked for this. You know, you know what is this? And it really shows you what, what you start to realize that people that, you know, while they're fine with you, it's like they're okay with you, but not the larger Thing that you represent, which which is to answer your question, was kind of a defining moment for me. That I realized that for many people, I've often served as kind of the safe friend of color, the friend that's different. And and um, you know, aside from the obvious things that many people of color or women or uh, different religions or cultures could talk to, I think this is something that's kind of often overlooked. And you know, I'm. Um, coming to this place where I really kind of challenge people that I know, do you just like me or are you not, or are you willing to give everyone a chance? You know, what, what is that? And, and um, some people have surprised me, some people have disappointed me, um, but yeah, and still, you know, here I am and I'm here and I'm honored to be serving here and ready to have that dialogue with people and, um, 
you know, we've heard repeatedly in the community that there's a need. So, so we're here. And, and as you said, we encourage people to come share your stories, help us make it better. You know, let's bridge the gap. It's, it, it's needed and, and it's time. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Beyond. Kathy. Thank you. Thanks, Shalon. That was awesome. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, growing up in Riviera, when I, when um, I grew up with like the best people, I mean, growing up here was wonderful. And I think that, you know, it was predominantly Italian American and most of my friends are actually first generation American and their parents and their grandparents also lived with from Italy. So Italian was a very big language in our neighborhood. And, you know, then there was the Rheinsteins in the middle of it that are not Italian and we're actually not Jewish either. And we don't speak Italian. So it was, you know, not being like everybody else. It's, it's different. It, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it's the same experience that Jalan and others have, but you know, it was always something that was, was there for us a little bit growing up here. Um, you know, I was struck by, and Jalan, if I'm, if I'm, I tried to write it down when you were saying they're okay with you, but not the bigger picture that you represent. And I wrote it down because it's interesting. I've had so many conversations throughout the years with people about this. You know, um, when I was lucky enough to be in the legislature, it was a time that we voted on marriage equality. And I had so many people, I met so many people and I listened to so many people. Um, and a lot of them said that too. They're like, they're okay with me, but they don't know if everybody should be allowed to marry. Um, and I still have this conversation with friends. I had one this summer that was like an incredibly moving experience with someone who I adore and I've known since he was a very small child. Um, and I think, you know, I, I'm really lucky. I, I work at Roca now and it's a really diverse population and we're, we're having these conversations internally. And, you know, something that I keep, that keeps coming up in my head and I think has really been important in everything I've done and how I grew up was, you know, one, always listening, even listening when you know it's, it's not gonna end like that you're agreeing, but people wanna be heard and listening to them in a way that you wanna be listened to. So it's, it's about how you speak to one another, how you listen, active listening, dialogue. I think Janine Angelon said, I mean, that's what's kind of missing right now. We're very polarized. And I think, you know, the one thing that stands out to me is being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And we're never going to understand. I would have never understood a lot of transgendered people and what they're what they were going through and what a lot of uh, you know gay, lesbian, LGBTQ people were going through had I not listened and learned. And I feel like I've I think like all of us, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm a, always going to be a work in progress. There's always more I can learn. But I feel that I never feel uncomfortable in asking uncomfortable questions because I think it's important to learn because I can't, I can't judge you if I haven't talked to you. I don't know if that makes sense. Thank you, Kathy. Ruben, would you like to answer, answer that question? Oh. I'll give it a go, sure. So, um, you know, uh, if you if you didn't know this about me from my name, um, I grew up Jewish, um, and there was a time in uh, obviously in the world, but you, you know even in America where there was a lot of discrimination against Jewish people, and there came a point in time where the systemic discrimination against Jewish people really kind of ended. And I don't know exactly what that point was, but you know, there was a point where um, Jewish people might have a hard time um, getting into schools because there was quotas or there was, you know, housing might be more difficult or um, various forms of kind of some of systemic discrimination. Um, and, you know, I don't wanna say it's ended. I would say that, you know, I don't feel it. I don't feel that anymore. But the systemic discrimination against other groups, especially people of color, especially black people in particular, I think, but, but certainly also immigrants, um, it still exists. And I felt a huge amount of privilege, and I'll say the word, my own privilege, um, to have, uh, have the ability to know that whatever school I applied to, whatever job I applied to, even with a name that is widely recognized as Jewish, 
that that I never feared that I would have a hard time accessing uh, a job or a house or uh, an education or uh, that I would get pulled over by the police or or any of those types of, of things and um, and so you know I think that it is on all of us to recognize the good fortune and privilege doesn't mean that it was I was some things were handed to me it doesn't mean that I didn't have to work hard hard work exists but my hard work isn't greater than someone else's hard work it just means that I had to continue to work hard and other people are working hard and I've been able to be lucky in my situation and my job and, and elsewhere. Um, and, um, and there are barriers, there are systemic barriers, there are government barriers, banking barriers, educational barriers, things that, you know, yes, we have broken them down over, um, over the decades, but we still have a long way to go. And I'm struck by um, just how recent discrimination is. You know, the city of Boston is about to have a mayor who, when she was 11 years old, she was um, in a bus that were having rocks thrown at her for no other reason than the color of her skin and that she was going to a school that didn't want her. Like, that is real. Like, we're about to have a mayor who had that in, in Boston, in neighboring Boston, who had that experience. And I just think, you know, this idea of like, what is over, we're past it. Those things reverberate. Um, they reverberate through our society. And we just have to remember that we have so much more to do and so much more we can accomplish and so much more barriers to overcome. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful to be um, a part of, of continuing that. And, uh, and I, I am personally excited to see um, a black woman mayor in Boston and, and see what can be accomplished there. Cause I think it's, it's a trem tremendous moment in history um, for the city and for the region, for the whole region. Mm -hmm. anyway. Thank you, Ruben. So for those of you watching, uh, as well as the, those present, the commissioners and Ruben, they did not know I was going to be doing this. <laughs> I didn't really know I was going to be doing this, but when there were no, no registrations to speak, I felt that uh, I listened to a lot of podcasts uh, so I can educate myself more around whiteness and to be able to look at my own conscious and unconscious ways that I'm contributing even though I'm a good person, even though I want freedom for all. Um, and so I just got the sense maybe this kind of a conversation is helpful. I think like Kathy said, when we listen to each other, when we're willing to, to be comfortable within the discomfort, when we're willing to stay in the fire, hearing from the wisdom of each of you, this is important. Um, I just read an article about the importance of love and how love is often what's missing is the foundation of all this activism work. Because when love is missing, what happens is we're, whether we're conscious of it or not, we're serving our own agenda in some way. So we might be fighting on the behalf of a certain group. So say for instance, I'll just use this as an example, a black male leader might be fighting for, against racism, yet may not realize that is still enacting sexism. So if, we, if love is not the underlying foundation, then we're really, gonna, we're really gonna have difficulty. And I don't mean love in the warm, fuzzy love. Love can just be bearing witness, willing to stay, a deep, profound okayness. Um, so, that's why I want, I thought, since we didn't have people coming to speak with us, we'll start to open up and, and model a bit. Um, so lastly, the last question is, I guess um, maybe you might wanna briefly say, what do you see your involvement or role may be um, is, is serving either on the commission or supporting the commission? Ruben? <laughs> All right, me first. Huh? Um, I think um, my role as uh, part of the city staff um, is to help launch conversations within, um, within the city um, to be thinking about opportunities that we might have to do better. I think it's on all of us to think about where there might be unfairness, where there might be discrimination, even unintentional, where we might be you know, interpreting um, 
you know, policies or ordinances or whatever to, um, in a way that's historic and historically appropriate perhaps, but not, um, not appropriate to the moment. Um, and, uh, and that we have an obligation to think about those um, and bring them maybe before the Human Rights Commission, maybe in front of the mayor, maybe just say, hey, these are changes that we can make. And so I think um, it's really helpful to know from, from the HRC, you know, what are, what are the members hearing? What are you experiencing? Uh, you know, what, what are constituents experience? What do you staff experience? Um, you know, we've launched some internal processes that I think we'll be talking about in the coming months. Um, uh, that uh, I think will uh, help uh, initiate more of these conversations. Um, but I think that's the piece that, that, I, um, that I think is my role is, uh, in particular, besides helping facilitate and launch the Zooms and, and manage the, the website and, and all those, those things, I'm hopeful that I'll have the opportunity to think about how we as a, as a city can, can do more and do better. Thank you, Ruben. And thank you for all the ways you support us that are behind the scenes. Um, Jalon, do you want to go? Thank you. I'd love to. So um, from my point of view, aside from the traditional things that we've outlined, kind of our mission statement, those things that we're going to strive to do, um, I'm looking forward to having a seat at the table to provide some perspective from one of the others others being not the dominant culture, the dominant race, the dominant religion, um, gender wise as well. So I'm really looking forward to, to being that, being able to offer that um, through dialogue, conversation, action. And also I, I'm here to kind of bear witness to what our fellow community members bring to us and try to make the community better for, for all of us. Mm. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jalon. Kathy? Thank you. Um, to kind of jump off of what what Jalon said, you know, providing perspective. So I, you know, honestly, a little a little bit of why I'm what I it's selfish, right? Because I want to learn from my fellow commissioners. I want to learn and, and and listen to them, and I want to learn and listen to some community members who, you know, I never knew or met or you know, had, you know, don't have their perspective of their life or their, you know, their history. Um, so it's kind of selfish because I, I feel like everyone is better when they learn a little more. Um, but, you know, also it is to listen. And I think, you know, I think what Ruben was saying, we was, you know, part of it is, you know, unintentional bias, I guess, I think it's called implicit bias, right? It's the, your unconscious bias and we all have it. All of us have it. It's okay. You know, we don't even know it's actually, quote unquote, not our fault, but how do we break down those barriers? And then, you know, blind spot bias, which is, you know, seeing bias in others and not yourself, right? I think I also have been probably guilty of that, right? Not understanding my implicit bias, but really calling other people up for theirs. So I feel, you know, those are the things that, you know, I want to become better at. And, and maybe through this commission, we can collectively make members of, of our community better than that and it becomes more cohesive. Thank you, Kathy. And, you know, I think there's so, there's so much to say, but in a nutshell, I wanna use my whiteness to be an ally. You know, and, and I've really learned with having difficult conversations with um, very dear white, loved ones, um, family and friends. At this point, I don't care if white people get caught up and defended and triggered by words like privilege, supremacy. I don't even care what words we use. What, whatever it is for us to be able to just own, we've had certain advantages. Like that's what people want to hear. And how can we sort of, it's, it doesn't make us bad people. We didn't do it on purpose. We were all sort of born into it, but that is the way it is. So what can we do to help undo some of these systems? Um, so whatever small way that I can um, humbly offer anything to move that forward and support the commissioners, 
uh, in the commission and the community, as well as work with our wonderful diverse group. Um, I'm, I'm happy to do that and we'll do my best and it's it'll be sort of awkward and I'll make mistakes. We'll probably all make mistakes, but it's okay. And just to be willing to stay the course. Um, does anyone have any final comments before I just review the way that you can give input and participate? So I'll just let you unmute yourself if you do. I just wanna really thank you, Janine, um, because, and Ruben, um, anyone, if you watch this at all, you have n you can never comprehend how much work this is and how much time both Janine and Ruben spend on this. And I am just selfishly and unashamedly, unabashedly saying thank you to both of you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Kathy. I'll also extend my thanks to you all as well and to the entire HRC commission staff and to the city and the mayor in particular for starting this commission. And um, again, encourage everyone to um, engage in dialogue with us and help us um, make this as good as possible we can. And uh, that's all, thank you. Thank you, Shalon. Yeah, I also wanna thank, Janine has been remarkable. I mean, I know that, um, you know, that there's a lot going on and, and everyone has things going on and I play a role, but, but the work that Janine is doing has been amazing. So I just wanna appreciate that. And thank you, Kathy, for the nice words in Jalan. Um, but really Janine has been the, the power, uh, the powerhouse force here. And uh, I'm so grateful um, to be able to work with, with you. Thank you all. And thank you to the, mayor for you know feeling that this was important to reactivate this commission and, and you know bringing together a group that's quite diverse uh, if you don't know us we're diverse in gender age race culture background so um hopefully as time goes on uh you'll get to know us more and before we close i just want to show you the way that you can easily right now um if you this is the um, direct link to give us input. And if you, if you click on that, it will take you to this here. And there's a questionnaire. You can share your survey, uh, share your story. This is the last meeting. These are links if you want to register. Um, these different tabs here, you can answer different questions. You can make them public or not. So that's up to you. You can keep them anonymous. You can give us input on how you might see that we could help. And you can tell us a little bit more about yourself. And again, all these questions can be public or not. And it also, um, you can click here to get onto our webpage, which Ruben has graciously been keeping on top of, which has our mission statements and gives a little background and et cetera. Um, so right now, revere.org forward slash engage HRC will allow you to either register for our next one, which is Wednesday evening, March 24th at six o'clock. If you wanna join this conversation, you could also provide written input and make that public or not. You can watch any of the previous meetings or link to our, our webpage with our mission statement and uh, previous meetings that are recorded or minutes from those meetings. Uh, did I miss anything on that end, Ruben? Nope, uh, no, and I'm just gonna give uh, for Spanish translation, I'll put this so that he can uh, add it to, uh, um, the, uh, the Spanish translation he was asking for the link, so. Okay. Well, I know that, you know, it's a Saturday morning and I so appreciate Jalon and Kathy for coming, Claudio for translating, Ruben for facilitating. And um, even though we would love to have community members to uh, engage with us. It was greatly helpful and beneficial to have this kind of conversation. Uh, so thank you all for, for just showing up and participating. And I mean, showing up 
being, you know, honest and open, not just showing up on the Zoom link. So um, thank you, Claudio. I guess now that that's in the uh, chat, is that are we complete, Ruben? I think we are. I'm just going to show the final image right now so that everyone can see the image uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll close out with your permission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you all again. And please stay in touch with us and now maybe consider coming to join or watch on Wednesday, March 24th at six o'clock. Thank you.